Well, thanks, uh, thanks everybody for for being here. Interesting, interesting times. I, um, it, it's funny as I was thinking about all that's gone down these last couple of days. My my dad's favorite song is uh, "American Pie" by Don McLean. It yesterday felt a little bit like the the day the music died. It was a really hard day for I think all of us involved in college athletics. Um, I, I put out the statement yesterday, um, but it's hard I think for people to recognize all that goes in to the preparation and these few opportunities for our student athletes to go out and compete to play the games and the sports that they love it's um and there's so much energy so much effort from the the student athletes from the coaches from the support staff obviously this is what our entire operation is about is providing these moments that are that are very scarce uh, and uh, when I meet with the freshmen at the beginning of every year I, I tell them that this thing is fleeting it, it passes in the blink of an eye and we encourage them to enjoy it to, to really take the time to, to pause and reflect and, and and recognize the the opportunities that they're having as they come and uh, yesterday we we found ourselves in a position where we for a certain segment of our student athletes, took uh, a significant piece of that of that window away, and um, you know, occasionally it's every once in a while. Those of us involved in this every day, you know, we spend uh, a big part of our life treating these these contests as um, the most important thing that we have, and and we put a lot of energy and a lot of effort. Uh, into building competitive, successful programs. But every once in a while, something happens that, that helps to bring everything into focus. And we've had a few of those uh, events happen here over the last several months. We had the, the passing of my, my friend, Robert Archibald. Uh, of course, we had the, the passing of our NBA legend, Kobe Bryant. Uh, and then certainly, as this co coronavirus situation has continued to develop, um, it, it can't help but but bring everything in, in into focus in terms of where sports fits into the bigger picture, and uh, at the same time, I, I think that it's also been a really empowering reminder uh, of the reach and breadth of sports uh, and of the the great service that I, I think we provide to society, uh, and it's helped to remind people about the power of relationships, about the power of these games to bring people together, uh, to create sense of community. Uh, and all of a sudden, when the lights go off and the entire thing goes dark, um, there's this incredible sense of, of void uh, and, and loss that, um, that we have to work through. Uh, I mentioned in my statement, yesterday was the hardest day. Uh, I've never had a day like yesterday. Um, things happen incredibly fast, and, and they're not finished happening. I think that's evident that things are very fluid. They, they continue to evolve uh, on a national level, on a regional level, and, and certainly here on our campus as well. Uh, but the, the communication to the student athletes last night, we had a, uh, a teleconference with them um, where we, we, we sent an email to them in the, in the afternoon uh, just on the heels of the, of the announcement from the Big Ten. And then we had a, uh, a teleconference with them and any parents who wanted to participate last evening. Uh, we'll have another one, uh, most likely early next week. And, and part of the message is this is a, an evolving situation, so we don't pretend to have all the answers. We work really hard not to, uh, to, to act like we have answers to questions when, when we don't. Um, but the message to them really was just one of appreciation, support, um, empathy. Uh, again, I, I have great understanding of, of what has gone into preparing for these opportunities and to suddenly, for reasons out of their control, have the opportunities taken away is, um, and the word I used yesterday is, is true, it's heartbreaking. Um, and, and so we want to be there for them uh, as they work through this and, and their own emotions um, and we will continue to provide that support. Um, so to, to just kind of outline what what has happened and I, I think that's that's fairly evident at this point but just to be sure we're all on the same page uh, at this point there will be no competitions 
um, for the remainder of the year for any of our teams, conference, non-conference, home, away. Um, there will be no practices for our teams for the remainder of the year. Um, there will be no organized team activities. And th these were decisions that we made yesterday in advance of uh, the Big Ten's announcement this morning um, relative to, to organized team activities. I think what's important to us is that, again, this is bigger than sports. Um, and so as our university continues to navigate the situation to put policies in place, uh, we want to be sure that our student athletes are in a position to comply with those policies, to follow the, dir the directives that are coming to our entire student body without concern for their status as a student athlete, that we're not putting in place uh, a situation where uh, they have to choose between what the university is telling them to do and what they're being asked to do by our athletic program or by our coaching staff. Uh, and so we want to be sure that they have a clear path to, to make good choices for their own health, for the health of their families in our campus um, that, that aren't affected by what they feel are obligations to the athletic department. Um, and, and so we've tried to remove any of those barriers um, and, and again, provide them with, uh, with that clear choice. Um, what is an organized team activity? Obviously something that people will ask. I, I think from my perspective, it's, it's planned workouts, it's organized activities, um, it's scheduled uh, lifting. Um, and uh, you know, we're, we're not, again, we don't wanna create any sense of, uh, of compelling them to be in a certain place at a certain time if in fact that is going to contradict the directives that are coming from, from the university. Uh, we also, as, as I think people saw the Big Ten yesterday, uh, placed a prohibition on in-person, on and off-campus recruiting activities. I think that, uh, that makes tremendous amount of sense. Um, we'll also be making some announcements uh, probably later today with regard to public use of some of our facilities, uh, particularly the Atkins Tennis Center um, and, uh, and the Armory. Um, again, in, in light of everything that's going on, we think it's, it's best to err on the side of caution uh, and, uh, and we'll have more information about that forthcoming. Uh, we will have uh, a number of our student athletes who will remain here on campus. Uh, we, we have a certain segment of them who have uh, a variety of reasons to do so. Uh, certain student athletes may be recovering from surgery, may be in the midst of uh, rehabilitation, uh, they need a, a higher attention in terms of the athletic training, sports medicine. Uh, we'll make arrangements for them to be here. Um, certain student athletes, some of our international student athletes, uh, others of our student athletes who may uh, come from different backgrounds, different places, it may make more sense for them to be here uh, than to be at home. And, and we're working through who some of those student athletes might be. Um, some of our student athletes uh, may benefit from, from more on, on in-person uh, and hands-on academic support. Um, and, and so we'll be sure that, that they have the opportunity to be here as well. Um, for those student athletes who are here, uh, we will continue to provide access to our, our support services. So we still will have weight rooms available. We'll still have our athletic training room available. Um, we'll have our, our academic services center available, our, our varsity room. Uh, and again, all these things are subject to change depending on how things continue to, to develop at the campus level. Um, but uh, those, those, will, those services will be scaled back. Uh, hours will be limited. We'll probably try and condense our facilities down. Instead of operating six weight rooms, we may operate two um, so that we can focus our resources on making sure that those spaces remain sanitary, clean. Um, we're able to keep our personnel uh, aligned with uh, the, the spaces that we do have uh, available for use. Um, and, and I think m most importantly for me in, in the near term, is making sure that for those student athletes who yesterday had their opportunities curtailed, that we provide uh, an outlet, that we provide services and support. Um, again, I think for people who haven't been in the arena, so to speak, uh, understanding the, the emotion that goes with these decisions and suddenly having something so abruptly taken away after you've spent literally the, the, the bulk of your life trying to get to that place um, is, uh, is difficult. And so we want to be sure that whether it's our, our coaches, uh, our sports medicine professionals, our mental health professionals, uh, our administrative staff, um, that, that we are, are, are there and available to answer questions and help uh, the young men and women in our program uh, grapple with this new reality as we, uh, as we work through the end of the spring. 
Um, but um, you know, these are these are hard decisions. Um, but the, it's also a, an interesting time. It's an un, unprecedented time, uh, and so we we need to be in a position to uh, exercise some agility. Uh, and as I, I said, I think yesterday in the statement, make sure that we return to our core values. And, and we talk all the time about how our student athletes, their health and well-being, is is number one on that list. Uh, we don't often get pushed to make a decision that um, that sometimes could be at odds with that. Um, but in this case, we we did, uh, and, and we needed to be sure that we came out on the right side of uh, uh, of that question. So. Uh, I'll uh, turn it over to Coach, and then uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Well, I think, first of all, um, a big thanks goes out to the Big Ten uh, leadership, uh, to uh, Josh, the leadership of our, uh, of our university, uh, in what has been an unprecedented turn of events. And, and I think we all... Uh, we all understand that this is bigger than uh, a, a tournament um, and, and a Big Ten tournament and, and an NCAA tournament, and, and, it, and it actually is um, a very valuable lesson uh, for all of our student athletes in, in, in what is the game of life, uh, that it is um, pretty, pretty significant and, and, and how abrupt it can end. Um, we were practicing yesterday. Uh, in Hankel Fieldhouse, and um, we, you know, we were told, you know, both teams were on the on the floor warming up, and we knew that there were were not going to be uh, fans, and 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 yet it, it was there was a tremendous sense of excitement, and uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes into that, we found out that that that, that was not going to happen. Um, we finished practice. Um, Showered, came home, uh, and then uh, you know had probably one of the more difficult conversations I've ever had to have with the team. Um, and uh, nothing's easy in those moments. Uh, you feel for Kipper, Tyler, Sammy, Andres Felice, um, and um, we're an NCAA tournament team. And there was no doubt about that. And you can put an asterisk by it. You can put whatever you want. I think it's the first time since 1938 there won't be a national champion. Um, and um, I, I said it after the last game here, my, my gratitude for that group of guys uh, will, will never be remembered. I made a comment to Josh yesterday that uh, – uh, in all my years, and however many more that I have in me, this this team will I will always remember, and it won't be because we didn't play in the NCAA tournament, and the NCAA tournament didn't happen. It'll be because of all the fond memories and all the hard work, and all the character, and and all of the the the, the wonderful adjectives that go with a team. I had fun this year. I had a blast coaching this team, and. Uh, when you get to enjoy those moments, uh, to have it end abruptly, uh, and for something that's that is 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 so big, it, and it, it it is hard. It is hard. It's it's crushing. It's devastating. I had a sick feeling the night before. I kind of had an idea of where it was going, and uh, it's just hard to uh, uh, put that in the right perspective. But. Um, this team achieved a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud. We've got Illinois back in the NCAA tournament. We've got Illinois back on the, on the, on the national stage. And, um, you know, the event's not going to happen. And I feel for those kids. Uh, our coaching staff's done an incredible job. And, and we'll be there. We'll be back there. But those four guys won't. And, and that's what's um, that's what's so disappointing, to walk on that court and, and, and get that that experience, but uh, uh, circumstances are, are what they are, and and uh, uh, we'll continue to uh, grow this program and and uh, 
and, and keep working. And in the meantime, I'm going to have nothing but incredibly fond memories of this season. And I can't wait to just sit back and, and, and really dig into all the positives that have happened in, in, uh, in this season. So to that, I'll open it up. Before we do questions, I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback on one thing that, that Coach said. I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that how fortunate I think we all feel to be involved with uh, the leadership that we have, and whether we're talking about the campus, the conference, uh, the NCAA, uh, and how grateful I am to our coaching staff. I met yesterday with our entire coaching staff uh, and, and then our group of, of uh, staff members over in DIA as well. We've, we've had sort of nonstop meetings here over the last 36 hours as we think about the implications of this decision for our entire operation, but in particular for our student athletes. And uh, we, have, we have a really talented, dedicated group um, that has uh, put their hearts out here over the last uh, couple of days and uh, really grateful to them for, the, for the, the long hours and the good work that they're doing. Josh, uh, Kevin Warren said yesterday that he met with all 14 athletic directors about what to do regarding the tournament. What were those meetings like and what was the feeling when he was meeting with you guys? Yeah, we've, we've had a series of meetings. So we had a, we had a pre-planned meeting over in Indianapolis on Wednesday afternoon, um, starting at, I think at one o'clock Eastern time. And, uh, you know, we arrived with a certain agenda and I don't know that we really even got into the agenda at all. The, the, the virus conversation, of course, dominated uh, the day. Uh, and then since then, we've had a series of, of conference calls. We had another one this morning. Uh, I expect we're going to have actually daily conference calls here for the next uh, week or 10 days as we continue to, to watch this unfold and react accordingly. Um, you know, I'm unbelievably impressed with, uh, with Kevin's leadership. I mean, talk about getting thrown into the fire. Uh, all of a sudden, here he is. Uh, just a, a couple months on the job, and we're dealing with something that none of us have ever seen in our lifetime. Um, I, I appreciate his uh, his open mind. I appreciate his interest in gathering feedback and building consensus. Um, and and I'm really um, proud to be a member of of this conference and to be associated with the other athletic directors, uh, the faculty representatives, our senior women administrators. Everybody has had uh, a voice in this. Our presidents and chancellors. Um, and um, I think we have, a, as much as any league in the country, I think we have a really strong sense of identity and, and a good comfort level with who we are, and we allow that to drive these hard decisions. And um, it's been a very collaborative process and, uh, again, been, been incredibly impressed with everybody who's, who's had a voice in it. Josh, obviously one of the issues that has arisen is what to do with the seniors that have, you know, had their spring seasons taken away with the winter sports as well. Um, would this institution advocate for them to apply for a waiver uh, to have their season back and or a red shirt situation? Have you thought about that? Have you had meetings about those situations? We just started to, to think through some of those things. Um, it's, it's not as straightforward as, as it might first seem. Uh, I think that there, I fully expect that there will be a lot of, uh, amendments, waivers that will stem from these events. Um, I, I think that certainly the opportunity to come back in, in a lot of ways is a, is a no-brainer for student athletes who want to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, but you're also going to have to look at scholarship limits. You're going to have to look at roster sizes uh, because most of those spots have been given to somebody for next year. Um, and so uh, you may have to, to grow the, the, the scholarship support for a year while we work through the transition. Um, not to mention you know, things that you probably won't be able to work through as much, but if an incoming uh, baseball player thought that you know the, the stud center fielder in front of them was going to graduate and move on and that spot was going to be there for them to, uh, to try and compete for, and all of a sudden that stud center fielder is coming back, um, you know, that, that changes that internal dynamic. That one's probably not something that we can deal with legislatively, but uh, I, I do expect that we will have a seat at the table as some of those conversations begin to uh, to grow here in the in the coming weeks. Josh, you mentioned Kevin's leadership through this. How do you approach this unprecedented event? What do you see as your role as a leader through this? 
Well, I, I don't know that it's any different than my role as a leader in any other capacity. I, I think that, um, you know, we, we try to be, um, in a lot of ways, kind of the, the calm eye in the center of the storm. I, I think that people are, are going to look to me and to our, our leadership team within DIA for guidance um, for how to react to circumstances like this. Um, I, I think there are certainly elements to this that, that are unprecedented. The, the speed at which things have changed has been uh, really hard to fathom. I and mean, it seems like we get one uh, sense of what's happening, and then by the time we put a communication plan together around that, then it's changed again. And um, But uh, just try to get the right people in the room, ask the right questions, um, and, and push people to think uh, proactively about some of the implications of these decisions. And, uh, and above all, in, in, in try and almost triage uh, the questions and think about, okay, what needs urgent attention? What can we push off till tomorrow? What can we push off till next week? Because uh, everybody's got their own little pocket in this. And, and so uh, somebody in the business office is going to wonder, well, what happens to the the bus contracts, what happens to the hotel contracts. And in their world, that seems really urgent. Uh, but in, in the grander picture, then we're, we got to focus on student athletes first. We got to get that. And then we're going to move sort of out from that, that starting point. And, um, and, and so you just try and, and create a priority list and, and work through some of those questions. And we've got, as I said, a big group across the way that's um, put in a lot of time and attention trying to, to get that list in the right place and, and start to develop some of those answers. Josh, maybe before this week, how much may in the department were you talking about coronavirus? What were those conversations like? Yeah, I think that it, it's become a, a fairly significant topic of conversation over the last, I'd say, three weeks. Uh, you know, we'd started to, to really pay attention as it was starting to gain more national attention and as, as the university started uh, to focus more and more on it. Um, and so we were, we were starting to think through some contingency plans. Certainly we had done a lot of the things that you would expect in terms of encouraging our student athletes uh, to, to be mindful of physical contact and, and their cleanliness habits and, and the like. Um, but, uh, you know, it, uh, obviously it's ratcheted up fairly significantly here over the last week in particular. Uh, I don't know that any of us anticipated that it would get to this place. Um, but once it started to move this direction, I felt like as I left the meetings in Indianapolis on Wednesday, uh, I, I felt like it, this was almost the inevitable conclusion of where it, where it might go. Brad, we think of Selection Sunday as part of the experience. You said you guys were an NCAA tournament team. There's other teams in the Big Ten. Penn State and Rutgers were just getting back for the first time in a long time. Do you think that there would be value still to hear your name called? Is, is that, would that be something that would mean something to you guys, even though there's not going to be a tournament? Well, there's not going to be a selection show. Um, and, you know, it's one of the great, great, great emotions that take place is hearing your name called and, and that, that sense of accomplishment that, that you have. And, and uh, um, I don't think there was any doubt. You know, we weren't a bubble team. We weren't, you know, we were in. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, all the talk – you know, for us was about, you know, can we move up a line? Can we move up two lines? What, you know, what happens? That's what the Big Ten tournament, how it was going to impact us. So uh, I'm disappointed for our guys that they don't, they don't get to hear their name. That's, that's pretty special. It's one of the great memories. Uh, but, uh, but I also understand the, the ramifications of automatic qualifiers and who do you pick and, and how, how difficult that, that, that could be. But uh, uh, we'll wait till next year. Josh, when, when you think back on this past year of Illinois athletics, just how do you put it all in the context? What was this past year just meant to Illinois athletics as a whole? It's been the year that we needed it to be. I think that this, this was the year, as I've said, in different settings where when, when we got here in early 2016, if you'd said, okay, when, when do you expect to turn the corner? Uh, I, I would have circled 2019, 2020. And, and I feel like we've been able to do that. And, and again, it's, it's differentiating emotions. It's not being satisfied, but being happy. Uh, I think that we're in a good place. Um, this was a, a really important step in the right direction, particularly in the sports of, of football, men's basketball. Uh, I think our fans are excited. I think our community is excited. Uh, I think I know our student athletes are excited. 
Uh, we, we talk all the time about winners wanting to be around other winners and, and you're feeling the culture within the athletic program evolve and change and there's now an expectation uh, that I think is being passed around amongst the student athletes, amongst the coaches. There's positive peer pressure. Hey, look, look what we're doing. What are you doing? Um, and I, I think that's a really, uh, a really good place for us to be. And uh, now the, the challenge for us is to, is to take this momentum and capitalize on it and use it as a springboard to what I think can be a really special year next year uh, and beyond. And, and so um, pleased, never satisfied, but, uh, but happy with, uh, with where we are and, and looking forward to, to what's to come. Brad, you mentioned that you know this is toughest for the seniors, and what have you just seen them? How have you seen them react to this? Oh, there was it was it was a lot of raw, raw, raw emotion, and uh, you know that there there were there were more hugs, more tears from coaching staff, players. Um, you know, they people forget we invest a lot. We invest a lot of ourselves in each of these young people, and and. And uh, we want for them to have special moments and, and, and memories that last a lifetime. That's what part of uh, the beauty of athletics is, is that you create lifetime opportunities and lifetime memories and relationships. And, and uh, uh, yeah, that was, a, that, was, that, was, that was a challenge yesterday. And, and um, you know, there, want, there, there, weren't, there wasn't a dry eye in there. And... Um, you expect that. That's when you know people are invested and they're they're bought into uh, to everything that we're we're doing. And and uh, um, I, I couldn't be prouder of that group of guys. And uh, yet, you know, my heart aches for them. Josh, obviously tough for those basketball seniors that don't get their postseason. For the baseball and softball team, did you, have you gotten a chance to address maybe those seniors that kind of see their season end before it really started? Just in the context of the, the overall student athlete communications, we haven't had a chance to sit down with individual teams yet, um, but I, I anticipate that we will have that, that opportunity as the, as the weeks go on here. We'll see again as, as the university issues its various directives, um, what those opportunities look like, whether they're in person or they're, they're virtual. Um, but you know, again, we, we have great understanding and empathy for um, for what this means for a lot of our seniors, and uh, we want to be sure that we're um, looking at and, and we've we've tasked some of our our group across the street with thinking about ways, and, and they're not going to be uh, great. Uh, we recognize they're going to be poor substitutes, but are there ways that we can um, soften the blow a bit for for our seniors in particular in terms of things that they're specifically missing senior day uh, at their in their respective sports they um, some of them may had have, have had the opportunity to be four-time letter winners uh, people who are um, looking to, um, to to compete for, for this last time graduation we don't know what's going to happen around commencement we always do a breakfast for, for graduating student athletes that morning um, things like that end of the season banquets where the seniors are honored um, how can we how can we handle an approach? Those those things that are being uh, foregone and, and create maybe some different, uh, but but some sort of an experience or something that um, uh, at least helps to make uh, a little bit of a, uh, of a of a of a lemonade out of a lemon. Josh, as rapidly as this all develops in a negative way, if things were unexpectedly to go in a positive direction, is there? been any talk of a, a door open at all to any kind of reversal or is this all final well if we've learned anything over the last 24 hours I think it's that this entire situation is fluid and as we've uh, managed through it uh, we've, we've done so with the information that we have available at any given moment I, I think that we anticipate that um, that the situation will not be better to the point that we would be in a position to um, to re-engage in certain activities. Certainly the, the competition thing is final. That, that's not going to get changed. Um, you know, we recognize that there's a lot that goes into the planning and preparation for the, for the travel and uh, the, the officials and the, and the event staff and all the other things that go into hosting games or traveling to, to participate in games. Um, you know, whether there would be an opportunity to revisit 
the practice conversation or the organized team activity conversation, sure. I mean, I, I, we're never going to say never. Um, but again, just based on the, the information that I have and, and my, my admittedly relatively limited understanding of, of what's happening in the world around us, I, I don't think, given that we're sitting here in middle of March and the semester ends in, in roughly six weeks, I, I don't know that we'll see significant change during that window. And, and we'd be having, a, I think, a very different conversation if this was all happening in September. But the reality is we're so close to the end of the school year already that um, that it, in my mind it made sense to go ahead and take the take the full bite. Brad, Mark Few was on ESPN Live when they canceled the tournament. His first word were disappointed. He thought a postponement might have been better. Where were your thoughts? What camp were you in on that? Yeah, um, I actually spoke with Mark. Um, I mean, I think we were all all trying to avoid finality and 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 cancel is 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 final yet um as josh just mentioned i think when you get so close to the end of the school year you get um, so many other factors involved it, it it was way above just a basketball tournament and and you know you've got uh, travel restrictions you've got so many other things that go on i think you've got logistical uh, plans. Uh, I would have loved to, to to have seen it played, but I also am, am smart enough to understand that there were there were complications and uh, well beyond the realm of of what is normal uh, in terms of just postponing something and rescheduling it. Uh, and there there was tremendous amount of um, complications to that. But uh, um, I, yeah, you know, you're disappointed that it that it is final. It's over. We're not going to play it. But you fully understand uh, the path with which it had to be that way. Coach, uh, obviously, your son was on the team. You and Tyler have gone through life together, basketball together. Uh, what emotions did you feel knowing that your career with your son, at least playing-wise, was, was over in, in a way that probably nobody foresaw? Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. I'm, I couldn't be happier for him. Uh, for for his last game to be a start, for his last game to for him to play well, to contribute, um, those are probably make it all worthwhile. Um, you know, he was a part of an NCAA tournament team at Stephen F. He was a part of an NCAA tournament team at Oklahoma State. Um, he was a part of an NCAA tournament team at Illinois. Uh, he never got to step on the court with that, but uh, man, there's a lot to be really really proud of and and not as a coach as a father shoot that's that's i'm blessed josh i know you're working through the wellness part of this but financially i know there's so much hits going across how does this impact you guys do you know yet or without the travel and everything how, do, how does this impact you guys we don't know yet. I think it's a, is I talked about prioritizing questions. Uh, we know that's a big question that will need to be answered, but it's, it's not one that we've, we've been able to dive deeply into yet. Certainly there will be financial implications, uh, of, of these decisions, uh, in, but, but in terms of the magnitude and scale, I, I don't have a good sense yet. I guess, I guess Brad, where did you kind of draw the ability to, to craft the right message with those guys and just that process for you to, to have that conversation with them? Well, I thought on the drive home and, and, and a lot of us coaches were talking around the country and um, you know we, we kind of had an idea of what it was. And again, I think you just kind of pause for a moment and, and you realize the abruptness of it, but you you realize the raw emotion that's going to be there and how bad you feel. Yet, in in Illini basketball, there was a lot to be proud of, and I I wanted to make sure that that they understood uh, what they had done. They brought us back to national prominence. They brought us back to the NCAA tournament. They achieved great things. We had a double bye. We were in competition the last week for the conference championship, uh, the conference title. We were in a position to um, win a national championship. To be quite honest, I think in a year there there was there was no clear cut favorite. We were we had a chance. 
Uh, I wanted them to experience that. I, they, uh, the Illini Nation um, was, is, is back better than ever. And uh, the sellouts, the, the crowds, and, and I want them to remember those things. And, and not just the sadness and the, and, the, and the emptiness that comes from not playing, but the positives of what happened. And, and um, you know, that was a, that's why it was a tough, it was a, it was a tough meeting because you, you, you did mix so many emotions. And, um, but I'll be forever grateful, man. That, that, that group is, uh, is, is, is always going to live as one of the teams that, that, that accomplished so much and, and deserves so much credit. So I, want, I wanted them to know that. Josh, how do you encourage all of your teams to uh, maintain strength and conditioning while also saying that lifting is uh, one of the one of the things that you have to cancel as an official matter? And will your trainers be available and, and other support staff? Yeah, I, I think that um, one. I don't think we have to encourage it. You know, for our student athletes, the thing that I love about all of them is that their their level of commitment and dedication is really without peer, and so. Um, their their commitment to their ongoing development and, and physical improvement doesn't need me to, to incentivize that. They're they're doing that on their own. Um, and as I said, we'll continue to make facilities available to them to do that. Um, we will. We're, we're one of our meetings this morning. Uh, our our strength conditioning staff will be developing plans to be sure that we're able to continue to provide guidance and instruction to our student athletes even remotely. Um, so that they have access to uh, a, a plan so that they're not just going into the weight room and doing their own thing, that we're, we're giving them uh, a sense of direction and, and guidance uh, in terms of how their workouts should be, should be held and, and what they're trying to accomplish. Um, so it's, again, um, all new ground here, um, but uh, feel good that uh, our student athletes continue to be as motivated as they've ever been. And, and we'll continue to provide as many resources as we ever have, although the delivery of those resources might be a little bit different than, than we've seen in the past. Brad, how will you navigate recruiting, understanding you can't go out on the road? What will that look like for you? Do you even know at this point? No, I think it's, a, I think it's, it's something, in fact, we were, we were talking about this morning. I mean, we're all, uh, we're all in the same boat, and, uh, and yet the transfer portal is filling up as as probably as we speak. Uh, you can't bring those young people on campus. Uh, everything will probably be done a little more now over the phone. Um, you know, I don't know. I think it's to be determined yet if you can convince a kid to come by phone call. Uh, but I think again, it's a very fluid situation that we'll see how universities, how conferences choose to. Uh, to move forward, the NABC has banned uh, all recruiting. So, uh, you know, I, I, fortunately, I've got a great, great staff, and we are in a very, very nice position to uh, have a, a majority of our recruiting needs met. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll stay monitoring the portal, monitoring phone calls uh, the best we can. Uh, Mail outs become probably a little more prominent and stuff that we can send out through graphics and, and other, other things. But uh, uh, we'll stay as fluid as we can in, in, in that process. We've had a lot of 21 kids in unofficially, uh, some officially. That's been a very big positive is they got to see State Farm Center. They got to see some games. So, you know, being able to, to get those kids in here, uh, you know, we don't know what will happen with spring recruiting. Uh, we're being told that a lot of the circuits are could possibly not happen. Um, so we're still really up in the air as to what, what recruiting is going to look like here as we move forward. Brad, I suppose this is a, kind of a follow-up to that question, but, I mean, do you have ideas as a staff on how to keep, you know, maybe connected, you know, with the team and the players still engaged as you, you know, still move forward even if there's not, you know, organized activities. Yeah, and I think the one thing that, that um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. I think the one thing that's, that's needed for us is a break. And I, and I say that um, 
we've been going since June 6th. We didn't have a break with August uh, with the trip to Italy. Um, stepping away from, from and letting the body recover and, and, and the mind heal, so to speak, uh, will be a pretty good thing. We had it planned anyway that we were going to take several weeks away from it. Uh, and and uh, so we've got a little bit of time here how we'll get it. And as Josh mentioned, we've got highly motivated athletes uh, who, who are going to continue to, to work and improve their games and so on and so forth. And through Fletch, and we'll sit down and, 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 and monitor those situations. We'll stay up with the university policy and, and, and how, uh, if any of those things change. And, but uh, a break is needed for us. And, and, and we're, we're going to utilize that uh, uh, the best way we can. Josh, have there been any signs of sickness or any testing or need to be testing in the department? We haven't had anything, no. Josh, there will be a lot of communication about um, the communication between you know, the, the leadership whether it's the NCAA office in Indy to the school presidents to the college athletic departments. Um, how do you feel about how this was handled? I know it's unprecedented, but is that, is that an appropriate conversation to have about how do we com improve the communication? Uh, I think when it's over, uh, there's a chance to go back and, uh, and, and reflect on, on how everything was handled and, and learn from, uh, like you said, a situation that none of us have ever encountered before. I think we're still very much in it. Uh, and so doing a, you know, a look under the hood to, to examine how it, how it happened, I think is probably a little premature. Um, but uh, again, as I said earlier, I, I think that everybody is, uh, I, I have no doubts that they're all doing the best jobs that they can and in, in, in making the best of a, a really bad situation. And so, um, you know, we'll continue to, to engage uh, at the conference level and at the national level. And, um, and the, the ripple effects of this will be felt for a long time. As you mentioned in your question, I think there's just so many um, tentacles to this that are going to need to be addressed as, uh, as we get through the, the immediate nature of, of what's happening on the day-to-day -day and, and start to look at some of the longer-term implications. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. Josh, you, you have some staff who've earned some performance bonuses. You, uh, you might not you might have to change the trigger mechanism do you have to talk to the chancellor do you have to get board approval for that yeah we're we're, we're looking at some of that uh, we recognize that um, you know particularly for uh, some of our spring sport coaches um, they're they're now not going to have that same opportunity to earn some performance bonuses that they, they may have had in the past and you know those can be meaningful uh, increases for some of our coaches staff <laughs> Um, another thing that, that we're studying is summer camps, uh, and you know, that's another opportunity that many, especially many of our assistant coaches, have to earn supplemental income, and uh, and so those are those are open conversations right now that, that we're working through, um, recognizing that uh, we have staff who have come to rely on at least some percentage of that income as part of their annual compensation and. Uh, we want to be we want to be fair to them and, and mindful of that. So I, I don't I don't know the answer other than to say that it's it's on that list of things that that we've got to we've got to contemplate. Brad, you say we're just five days away from you walking off the court in Iowa, giving high fives to the Orange Crush, and you said you're at practice yesterday. I mean, can you describe just the roller coaster of this week, the emotion, how fast it happened, and how the emotions changed so fast? We've hit the gamut of of all of them. Um, you know, I. It probably hit the the bottom this morning when my wife goes. Now you got plenty of time to clean out your closet. Um, you know we shift gears so quickly in basketball, and um, you know it's 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 when the final game's over and and you just jump into recruiting and you wake up and you've got it you've got another gear that you just go to because it's. It's not X's and O's, and it's not your team, and now it's recruiting, and, and it never stops. And um, now it's stopped. And um, get winning, the, winning the last game, winning against Iowa, getting the double bye, we were all ecstatic. That was something that meant a lot. And, and, uh, and then to, uh, for me personally, to have Tyler out there, um, to have this group of seniors out there, I mean, I was – 
I was so happy for them. And, uh, um, you know, and I'll be, I'll be real, you know, having, having my contract extended, uh, was, was extremely important and very, very pleasing. And, uh, that emotion, uh, was, was a part of it, man, when you're in a place you love and, and when and it's the cliche, you don't mess with happy, you, you are happy. And, and, uh, and yet I don't think we ever lose the, uh, or I don't anyway, uh, understanding of, of, of why I got into this business and this profession. And, and that's to help young people grow and, and to see that, um, I mean, I had a pit in my stomach when we got to Indy and saw what kind of what was happening and and then when you got you're out there practicing and if you knew how good yesterday's practice was um Derek sitting back there nodding I mean we were off the chart and you're sitting there halfway through and you find out that they've pulled the teams and you know it's over and you you just know where it's going to go and um that's a it's a, it's raw emotion I, I I don't know how to explain it Brad, you mentioned earlier this team's been fun. You enjoyed coaching it so much. What was about it? I mean, we've seen the moments on the court, but what behind the scenes made this so enjoyable? Oh, their personalities. I mean, and 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 you guys have gotten to know them. I mean, you guys have you guys have gotten to experience them as much as I have. And and uh, this is a you know character over characters, and and our character is really high. And we've got great guys, and 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 they were fun. They they. Uh, they accepted challenges. They wanted to learn. They continued to grow. Um, it was it, it was it's a blessing to sit there and watch a guy like Io uh, get better, and 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 Andres Felice dive on the floor for a loose ball, and you know and and to see Io who didn't do that at one point in his career, now he's doing it four times in a game to win, and and the understanding and the development of of what it takes to win when they didn't last year and and that's special man that's 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 fun stuff and and uh, you know you you always you you always love going to practice when they want to continue to 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 listen and and to grow and and i loved every single day of our 102 practices guys we saw the <clears throat> nba a player actually contract this how comforting is it getting ahead of it maybe and not having a player get this yet yeah I I, I don't know that comforting is the right word I, I think you know again I have a pretty limited understanding uh, of how this thing actually works but um, you know it, it's it's going to make its way to Champaign it's going to make its way to the university um, I think with, with 10,000 student athletes in the Big Ten, I think for us to sit back and say that none of those 10,000 have already <laughs> contracted the virus would be naive. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think that um, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really happy that, that nobody within our department or, or among our student athletes has presented with symptoms yet. Um, but I don't, I don't know that I think that these decisions are minimizing the the spread and, and the risk of the spread for for our, our population, but they're certainly not eliminating that risk. And and that's I think the challenge that we're facing as a society is that we can put all these steps in place and we can self quarantine and we can we can be as mindful and uh, careful as we can be, but the minute we step into a room like this one. Uh, you know, you're all sitting there next to each other. One of you may have the, have the virus and not even know it. Uh, and so uh, you, you, you take all these measures, and then as soon as you, you re-expose yourself by going out to dinner or going to the grocery store, um, doing whatever, going to the park with your kids, um, then, you know, the, the steps that you just took before that uh, get a little bit undercut. And so that's, that's the challenge, I think, that we're all facing with, uh, with this new, uh, new environment. Right, I know a lot of IO's goals were shared throughout that locker room, but he had an opportunity at the next level last off season. We'll have another one this off season. It meant a lot to him to get you back to the NCAA tournament. What do you say to him? What do you want him to know? And what would your approach be with him? I know he felt like you guys still had a lot of unfinished business. 
Well, you're talking about a, a, a young man who was getting ready to p perform on the stage that he loved the most, and that was the big stage. And uh, uh, my love for Io runs well beyond what you guys can even imagine. And, uh, you know, there's a young man who loved this university, wanted to see it get back to where uh, he knows it belongs. I mean, he and, he and I... Had a, had a had an unbelievably common link in terms of wanting to see this thing grow, and he, I mean his pride is 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 second to none, and uh, his ability to work. And I've said it many many times. I've I've not been around a player as committed to success and and work as 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 Io is, and and that's not just on the court. I mean he's handled himself. Uh, off the court in uh, the academic endeavors, he's handled that off the court with, with his social habits at, at at a top shelf level, and that has helped get us to this point. And um, you know, we'll see what his what his future holds. I think everything's up in the air with the NBA. You know, what's going to happen with their season? What's going to happen with the combine? What's going to happen with the draft? I think everything's. At this point, we've seen the power of sport, and 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 it's at all levels. I mean, the Masters was postpo was postponed. I mean, we've seen all of spring training. We've seen NHL. We've seen NBA. We've seen uh, the XFL. We've seen so many things happen. So I think it's um, sports a powerful thing, and and um, you know, in, in Io's case, we'll we'll be there to support him every way we can. Josh, well, the service you said that services you said that would still be available for student athletes is counseling a part of that. Maybe for senior athletes who just had maybe their life as a college athlete end unexpectedly. It is, yeah. We we have a, a fairly robust mental health structure in place for that's always available to our student athletes. But we've already been in communication with them here over the last 24 hours, of, in, in particular in this instance. Uh, making sure that that we have resources available for them as they, uh, as I said, as they continue to to wrestle with the implications of this for 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 some of them for the end of their careers, um, and uh, and and that can come in a lot of different forms. Certainly, our our coaches, our athletic trainers, our academic um, counselors. There are a lot of people who form really close relationships with our student athletes, and so they'll be uh, surrounding them and making sure that they're available. Uh, but then also trained professionals as well uh, will be will be a part of those resources. Anything else for the two guys up here? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.